and welcome to the Science Trick Podcast. This time we're answering students' questions about the Earth. I love the rotation of the Earth. Why? It really makes my day. I think we need to learn more about the Earth before that joke makes sense. All right. Joining us today to answer students' questions about the Earth are Virginia Gilman, a geologist with the Idaho Geological Survey, and Jeffrey Johnson, Associate Professor of Geophysics at Boise State University. Dr. Johnson, why is the Earth round? When the Earth formed, it was a hot glob of material, and gravity pulled it together in the form that was most convenient. It couldn't pull it together in the form of a cube because that would be unnatural for the gravitational field. It pulled it together in the shape of a sphere, a slightly distorted sphere, but for uh, most purposes, a perfect sphere that is the easiest shape for gravity to pull an object into. Hi, my name is Mia and I go to Answer Charter School. Um, my question is, which part of the Earth is the most important to life? I would say the surface of the Earth, and that includes the rocks that we stand on, the soil that's produced from those rocks, and the oceans and the atmosphere that we breathe. We essentially live at the junction of all of those very complex geochemical and geologic and geophysical systems. And it might be some of that diversity that has helped create life and created the delicate balance that we, we use in our daily lives. Hi, my name is Jack and I go to Kamiai Elementary School in Kamiai, Idaho. And my question is, what makes the Earth rotate? Well, the Earth rotates because it's always rotated, and that's uh, really a pretty poor answer, but um, it is interesting to note that the Earth is rotating about the same rate it is now as it did when the Earth formed 4.6 billion years ago. Fact of the matter, it's spinning like a top, and there is nothing out there, no friction that's slowing it down, and it will continue to spin until the Earth, maybe billions, maybe trillions of years from now, impacts with another body. Hi, my name is Billy and I'm from Answer Charter School. And my question is, what are tectonic plates? Well, Billy, tectonic plates are what geologists call the rigid layers of rock which float on a hotter and more fluid semi-liquid rock underneath that we call the asthenosphere. And so the tectonic plates are constantly in motion. And when one of them dives under the other, like on the eastern or western coast of South America, they can form mountain ranges like the Andes and volcanoes like Cotopaxi in Ecuador or similar things are happening in Japan. So it's, it's the boundaries between these tectonic plates that create some of our most interesting geology. Yeah, and one of the cool things about tectonic plates is just how fast they move, Jenna. Uh, tectonic plates are moving constantly, but you and I, we can't feel them they move at about the same speed as your fingernails grow. Hi, my name is Addison. I go to Answer Charter School, and my question is, will Earth's continents ever meet again? The edges of the continents meet. They meet the ocean plates, and sometimes they meet other continental plates, like in the Himalayas. But geologists are finding out that over the last couple of billion years, Earth's continents and their plates have moved together and then been driven apart several times. And so we've formed supercontinents like Rodinia and Pangaea, where the continental masses, which are the land that you see that has rocks that have more silicon and aluminum and sandstone in them, those areas, those continental areas, have all been pushed together into these supercontinents. And then over time, those will break apart again. It's sort of like billiard balls, you know, hitting each other and then bouncing off each other. So they will meet again and they'll break apart again. It may take a few million years. Yeah, and, and India and Asia right now are colliding with one another, but it's a slow motion collision. It's, those two continents are coming together at a rate of only a few inches per year, and they are causing the continuing uplift and growth of the Himalaya Mountains. Hi, I'm Kellen. I go to Answer Charter School. And my question is, what purpose do the layers of the atmosphere serve? 
Well, Kellen, the atmosphere is really critical for us human beings because it provides the oxygen that we need to breathe and to live from. It also provides carbon dioxide, which plants breathe and use in photosynthesis. And then it has things in it like ozone that help protect us from the sun's harmful radiation. So we wouldn't be here without the atmosphere. Um, well, I was just going to add that their weather is happening in our atmosphere as well. Weather, of course. Hi, my name is Zoe. I go to Answer Charter School, and my question is, how does Earth's atmosphere compare to other planets? Earth's atmosphere is the best atmosphere that we know of for sustaining life. Now, other planets within our solar system also have atmospheres. Most of them are much, much thinner than Earth's atmosphere, and none of them have oxygen, which is necessary for life. One of the solar system's planets that has a very thick atmosphere is Venus. Now, Venus has lots and lots of carbon dioxide. And as far as we know, this is not a gas that's very good for most types of life forms. Hi, my name is Chloe. I go to Hillcrest Elementary School. How does the volcano shoot out lava? Oh, I get this one, Chloe. I love to study volcanoes, and I study how volcanoes produce lava and how that lava gets ejected from a volcanic vent. And so, really, there's one quick answer, and that is volcanic gases drive explosions. And those volcanic gases can be steam, carbon dioxide, or sulfur dioxide. But pressurized gases blow material out of a volcanic vent with more energy and more power than you can even imagine. Hi, my name is Oscar, and I'm from Answer Charter School. I was wondering how come Yellowstone is so geologically active and why there is no other place in the world like it. Yellowstone is geologically very active, and we think it's active because we can see it today. But there are other places in the Earth uh, that are similar to Yellowstone that have similar rocks. For example, the Topo Volcanic Zone in New Zealand, New Zealand which is also underlain by what geologists call a rhyolitic caldera, which is a large mass of liquid rock or magma that is high in silicon and aluminum. And in that case also, like Yellowstone, the hot magma chamber has heated groundwater and produced geysers, hot pools, mud pots, and similar features that if you visit New Zealand, you can you can walk through. So Ge Yellowstone just happens to be one of the places that's volcanically and geothermally very active right now, and that's why we know about it. There have been other places like it in the past, and there's a few other places like it in the world today. I'd just like to add that Yellowstone is special in that it has the most geysers in the entire world. In fact, 50% of Earth's geysers happen to be in Yellowstone which is wonderful. It's in our backyard, and I'm very proud to be living not so far away from Yellowstone. That's all the time we have for this podcast. Wait, I have one more joke. OK. What did one tectonic plate say when it bumped into the other? I don't know. What? Oh, sorry. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Virginia Gillerman and Jeffrey Johnson for answering our questions. And thank you for listening to our podcast. If you want to learn more about science topics, be sure to subscribe to the Science Trek podcast. And for more information about the Earth, check out the Science Trek website. You'll find it at sciencetrek.org. Funding for Science Trek is provided by the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, the Idaho National Laboratory, and supporters like you. Thank you.